welcome back to the channel guys today i'll be doing a stock versus overclock performance video with the asus rtx 5090 oc edition now these cards come out of the box factory overclocked and for most people that is plenty and uh, this video is basically going to demonstrate you can squeeze a little bit more performance out of the rtx 5090 if you're interested in tweaking that but of course there is a trade-off you'll have increased power consumption increased heat and potentially increase fan noise if you make a custom fan profile to to deal with that extra heat so there is a trade-off but for some people it's worth it i always like to tweak my hardware so for me definitely i just want to make this very clear the settings i'm using in this video work with my card it may not work with yours it's not a one size fits all silicon lottery has always been a thing in uh, graphics cards and cpus so just bear that in mind See what you can get out of your card, but don't just copy and paste what I'm doing. This is me demonstrating what my card is comfortable with. So with that out of the way, I just want to show you that, of course, my card has all ROPs or ROPs accounted for. Some of these cards are unfortunately defected, but it seems to be a very small sample size, so most of us should be okay. And I'm also using the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. I've got that overclocked to 5.6 gigahertz via boost. So it does give me a little bit of extra performance there just to try and get everything I can out of this beast of a graphics card. So what I do for this overclock, very, very simple settings, 300 megahertz on the core clock and 3000 megahertz on the memory. Now, even if you can achieve 3000, there is a chance you're not gonna have a net improvement in performance. You have to test this because um, some RAM especially GDDR6 and GDDR7 have error correction. So even if you can achieve the clock, you potentially may be losing performance. So obviously check this and see if everything is fine. I've done that extensively. So I know my card actually likes the 3000 and it's stable. So let's see the difference between running stock and overclock in a few games.
So there you have it guys, the results are in. And as you can see, there was an increase in performance in some games over 20 FPS like Tomb Raider. You have like Horizon Zero Dawn Remaster, not really showing the same type of increase, but still over 10 FPS, which is definitely a welcome boost. But then what you'll get is with the more ray tracing oriented games that are more GPU bound, you'd only get around five to six FPS increase. Even this game, this is um, territory. Assassin's Creed Shadows, you didn't get more than seven FPS increase. So a bit of a mixed bag, but in my opinion, you know, you do get rewarded for tweaking. Obviously that also came with an increase power consumption, increased temperatures. And uh, it's something that you need to be conscious of because you may not be able to keep those temperatures under control. And there's always uh, the risk of damaging your card with overclocking as well. So it all depends on if you think it's worth it personally. You know, I've always ran my hardware overclocked, never really damaged the card from overclocking. So um, I've actually had quite a good experience throughout my lifetime of overclocking hardware. Main thing is just keeping things cool, then you won't really get yourself into any trouble. But anyway, guys, hopefully this video was useful. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.